Why should be an honest answer be a mistake? How can a modern day manager not have a mobile phone? Why should he? Oh. Welcome along to the football show here on Off the Ball. They've been top of the table for more than 200 days this season. Arsenal going back to the top. Albeit, they will have played two more games than Man City at the end of this match. Second half just underway at the Emirates. It is Arsenal leading by three goals to nil. Two goals from Odegaard in the first half, one from Gabriel Jesus. Uh, We'll put Arsenal just in front of City by two points, but City will have two games in hand after their victory against their title rivals at the Etihad uh, last week. Meanwhile, Leo Messi suspended by PSG tonight for at least two weeks after an authorised trip to Saudi Arabia, where he is currently a travel ambassador for the country. Uh, He did not have permission to go, so PSG say he's not allowed into the club. He can't train with the club or play for the next two weeks, and he's also been docked two weeks' wages. He's expected to come back into contention to play for their match against Auxerre on the 21st of May. Uh, Messi left the country after PSG's defeat against Lorient on Sunday, where they were beaten by three goals to one. PSG are still top of Ligue 1 at the moment. Well, Leo Messi suspended for two weeks by PSG tonight. Uh, meanwhile, we've got to focus on the bottom end of the table. We're going to be talking to Adam Pope a little bit later about Leeds, potentially. It seems it's very much on the verge of happening, appointing Sam Allardyce as their manager to try and keep them up over the last four games of the season. And we've also got to focus around Everton as well, because Everton are in a very, very poor run of form at the moment. Um, Despite a very good start under Sean Dyche, uh, they have now won just one of their last 11 games. The eight points which they've gained along that run sees them sit currently second bottom after last night's draw against Leicester. Delighted to say that Dominic King of the Daily Mail is with us. Dominic, how are you getting on? Uh, Very much a feeling at the moment, uh, Dominic, when it comes to Everton, that they're going to have to find form somewhere, uh, despite the run of games that they have coming up, some very difficult games uh, with teams around them at the bottom of the table. And also they've got Man City uh, within their last few games as well. And points are needed and needed quickly. Oh, they are. Um, It's... um it's 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 one of the most tense situations I can I can remember. It's it's even more tense than last year. Um, they're in a, a situation where the next two games against Brighton and Manchester City, not many people are going to give them um, much hope of getting anything from. However, I did actually see signs last night that the um, the attitude and the fight and the um, desire to turn this round was there. And it, that, that wasn't evident on on um, against Newcastle when it when it just seemed like all all hope was lost. But um, I, I I just thought there was something to cling to last night, and I can see it going to the wire. What happened with this slump of form? Because as I mentioned, they were really impressive that first game under Sean Dyche against Arsenal, yeah. and some decent results were picked up around the games that were after that as well. Um, since then, obviously they're on this poor run. But what's happened in the last dozen games or so? Um, th- this really is where, 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 where the squad has been for two years. It's um, you, you can change Sean Dyche for Frank Lampard, for Rafa Benitez, um, to even to Carlo Ancelotti. Um, you know, let's for, not forget that um, how the season ended for for Ancelotti when um, b- before he left, it, that they'd been on a, a terrible run. Then I think it was only sort of three wins in thirteen b- b- before he left. Um, so th- this is this is what this Everton squad does. It's 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 horribly lacking in consistency. Um, it, it it leaves people to question them, but um, but th- th- they're fortunate in some way in the fact that the the other teams around them have been so wretchedly inconsistent that they still have a chance to um, salvage something. Uh, and if if you know there would have been a, a, a case for saying a few years ago that. Um, they wouldn't have had a hope in staying up after some of the runs that they they've had this year. But um, the teams at the bottom are much of a muchness, really, and they're they're all doing damage to themselves. So Everton might be able to get out of this just yet. Yeah, like nobody last week really took the incentive uh, to pick mm. up points when teams are dropping points around them at the bottom of the table. Um, from the impression I get from there is that we can almost pivot this back to poor transfer investment in recent seasons oh. as being the key issue because even that Ancelotti year, I remember Everton were trying to maybe. Uh, dine at a different table with the type of players that they were buying. They were buying players that were leaving Real Madrid and Barcelona and then Iwobi had gone from Arsenal to Everton and there was very much that feeling that maybe they were trying to buy themselves into a better position. Um, but as people are probably very aware of last year, some of the players who've been recruited in the last two to three seasons have come in on expensive wages, lots of concern about financial fair play. And we were mentioned just before the news, this is a time when Everton are getting ready to put a lot of capital investment into the stadium. 
it feels to me it's crucial that they stay in the Premier League and not drop into the Championship. Oh, uh, it's uh, it's it's. Uh, I wrote I wrote a piece for the um, for the Daily Mail and um, Mail Online at, at the weekend, um, and I, I, I sort of covered this this um, this topic. I mean, if Everton were to go down, there would be. Um, there would be financial hardship on its way. Definitely, they would they would have to sell players. There's there's, there's absolutely no question about that. Um, but you're right. This is um, I, I trace everything back to. I'll, I'll use Romelu Lukaku as the um, the example. Um, back in 2017, when everybody knew that he was leaving, um, Everton needed to sign a striker, and since then. They've signed ten forward players. I estimate ten forward players at the cost of one hundred and forty-five point one million. And here we are now, where Everton are one of the lowest scoring teams in the country. Never mind the, ne- never mind just the Premier League. Um, so that tells you the the sort of mismanagement, the wrong decisions that have been made. That the, the, the players that have come in that um, haven't done what what was. Anticipated of them. Obviously, some have moved on, like Richarlison, um, who had who was a who was successful. But um, how they could have done with him this year in terms of his character and his fight and his ability to do something something special. Um, but no, it's it it, it is it, it it is the sort of um, the narrative for any team that, that struggles. If 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 you if you you recruit badly and you make bad decisions, it one day it comes home to roost, and, and this is where Everton are. Yeah, and look, the golden egg is no longer there. Lukaku was there, who was sold for a remarkable mm. amount of money. Richarlison was sold for big money to Tottenham. I look through the squad right now. I'm not sure if that extra big sale is now possible at this stage. Uh, I think they they, they would. Um, I mean, this is obviously hypothetical. We need mm. we need we need to make this clear. And if if Everton do stay up, then. I wouldn't anticipate this situation happening, but they, they do have players that they could who, who would get premiums, such as um, Amadou Anana, Jordan Pickford. Um, they, they, they would get good money for them. Um, I would think if 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 they came, that came to it, um, well, please God, that that doesn't happen in the situation because the, the the point to sort of saying all this, we're talking about the club, we're talking about the players, but um, the the one constant. Um, positive through it all has been the fans. And last night at Leicester, uh, I was I was there. The back end that they received was absolutely incredible. It was one of the best away ends I I, I, I can remember seeing. It was three thousand of them there. They made the noise of forty three thousand. They're selling out everywhere. The the dedication and commitment that they've got. They have sold the tickets out for Brighton next week. They're going to travel. Um, 560 mile round trip to, to Brighton on a bank holiday Monday to go and see Everton and, and you know you know if the, if the squad had have, have half the passion and care of, of the um, of, of the fans there would be no problems yeah. there really wouldn't be any problems like we remember the scenes this time last year where they found that bit of form towards the end of the season a lot of the core group of players are there would the feeling be that they just have to kind of tap into that energy again and to just roll up the sleeves, fight for the next few weeks? And as you say, there's a possibility if they pick up six points over the course of the rest of the season, that might be enough to stay up with the way uh, the teams are around them. But they probably need to recapture that spirit of the tail end of last year. Yeah, they do. And But I, th- I also think it's, I think it's very unfair as well. That they, I mean, the fans are in- incredible in terms of how they've taken it upon themselves to sort of cultivate this in, in, in terms of... Um, Really difficult circumstances. Uh, the, 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 I, I've no doubt there would be um, groups of fans at other clubs, shall we say, who would would turn the back after after such a um, after such a run of uh, results and such a run of bad decisions by the club. But the Evertonians have, have gone the other way. They've, they've sort that the resolve the resolve that they have has been stiffened and it's been incredible. But it shouldn't be coming on to them to, to sort of create welcomes and create noise inside of the ground. It, it, the players have got to take responsibility, and it's on them now for the for the final four games. They've got to they really do have to step up. Where are the goals going to come from? Uh, Dominic Calvert Lewin scored from the penalty spot last night, but who's going to score mm. the goals to keep them up? Well, la- last night I was. Very encouraged by Dwight McNeil's performances. I think Dwight, he he's uh, of all the players who have um, of all the things that that have happened since Sean Dice has come in, McNeil's been a real shine and positive. Uh, um, and he, I, I would go as far as to saying it was his best game for Everton last night. 
if he can, and they they play the. There was there was a ferociousness about the way Everton Ever went about it last night. You know, it was it was quite simple what they were doing. It was long balls, win the second balls, try and just try and get the ball forward as as, as quickly as they could. But it worked, and Calvert Lewin was aggressive, and he gave them a focal point. And you know, there's it, there might just be there might just be a little formula there that for, there for them to cling to. It's as I said, it's going to be very very close, particularly with the next two games that they've got. If last night proves to be a very important point, I think some of the credit has to go to whoever the opposition stats analyst is because very impressive what was on Jordan Pickford's bottle. A very detailed breakdown of the penalty takers from last night. Well, I, I, you know what? I have to absolutely doff my cap to whoever the um, whoever the analyst is because um, James Madison hadn't taken a penalty in the Premier League since 2018 and they had a 60% probability that he was going to go down the middle of the goal um, on the, the the crib sheet that they, they put on the back of Jordan Pickford's water bottle. It was just, where they got that number from, I, I have no idea, but it, it proved absolutely inspired. And, you know, that was the, that, that was the type of... Um, Situation that Jordan excels in, you can you can see him. He, he he puffs his chest out. He's 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 um he's he's an incredible character. Um, and at the end, he was he was he was doing his best to g the, g the supporters up. He was um he certainly won't be going missing. And there's a, there's a few need to follow his lead. Yeah, I mean, like it's one of those moments as well in a game where a penalty is saved at that crucial stage within the game, where it almost seemed to give Everton a lift watching it here on TV. Mm. Yeah, it was. You could feel it in the stadium. Um, at three-one, I think that would have been game over for Everton. I don't, I don't think they would have had it in them to score two in the second half, um, and particularly as well with the um, the, the, uh, the 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 memory of what had happened to just Seamus Coleman was 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 just in the mind. That that only fi- happened five minutes before. So if they'd have gone three-one down. Having lost the, the club captain for what we fear is going to be a considerable amount of time, we don't know that yet. There's been there's been no um, significant updates, um, but you know, for for Jordan to step up and save that penalty, you could sort of see them as as they as they went off the pitch at the end. There was there was a bit of an, a spring in the step rather than heads down, and it could turn out to be one of the most pivotal moments of the season um, in terms of you know. Leicester could have been. Well, I said in my match report this morning, you, you were looking at the difference of being four points behind Leicester. Now it's just one. Seamus Coleman's injury, um, obviously a key moment. There was something very Seamus Coleman about it too, where he's being carried off. It looks like he's twisted his knee quite badly, and still he's getting mm-hmm. instructions out to his teammates as he's coming off the pitch. That maybe speaks a bit to Seamus Coleman as a leader within that group. You know, I've known um, I've known Seamus since he he, he came over here in um, in two thousand and nine. Um, he's 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 from um, Sligo. My father-in-law's from Sligo, um, and I've, I've had like a sort of little affinity with with with, with Seamus um, ever since. I remember when, when he was on his his first pre-season tour with with Everton, he got a dreadful um, blister in his foot that needed ended up needing surgery. And he, we were in America, and he needed um, he, he basically spent two weeks in Seattle in a in a, in a hotel room. Um, and it was it was an awful sort of little introduction to the first team that he had, but you know, he is he is one of the the nicest guys you could wish to meet. That um, his professionalism, his his commitment, his um, his dedication, the service that he's given to the club is has been absolutely remarkable. Um, I I hope the injury is not as 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 bad as the as it as the impact and the the, the slow motion replays made it look. Um, but you're right. The, the the very fact that when he's going off on a stretcher and his first thought is to raise his fists to the to the away end to 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 g everybody up. That, that's him in a nutshell. And um, you know, I, I I couldn't speak any higher of him as a, as a player and a person. Yeah, I hope it's not a bad one. I mean, we watched him on international duty a few years ago, pick up a bad one against Wales, and well, put him... you, you know, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. That, that that was me. Um, when I first seen the um, when I first seen the replay, that was my, my, my fear that it was some that, that was there's something the same again about um, what had happened with Neil Taylor. And you know, I spoke to Seamus just when he'd um, around the tenth anniversary of um, of his signing for Everton, and we we spoke at length about that. And he he, he said um, when it when it happened, he was never in any. Um, 
any doubt that it would stop his um his career at the top. He was just, you know, he was put his head down, um, got on with things, um, was determined to come back and um prove himself and, and here he is, you know, in, in his mid thirties, still still leading the way. And um, you know, as, as I said, as, what a credit he is to his family, what he is a credit is to his club, an absolutely top man. Um as I couldn't I couldn't speak any higher of him. Yeah, because like he's battled his way back into the team. Because with Irish eyes, we're always kind of watching. And when Patterson yeah, had taken yeah. the spot at right back, there was that concern that Coleman wasn't getting much football, and then Matt Doherty wasn't playing, so it became almost a weekly thing to check: is Coleman going to get back into the team? Mm. But second half of the year, particularly this year, he got himself back in a merit as Everton's starting right back again. Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, let, let's have it right. Without that goal that he scored against Leeds. Um, and and he meant it. He meant he, he meant that 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 volley. Um, what sort of situation would Everton be in now? Um, he was having a brilliant game last night as well. He looked, um, you know, he's he's just come back off, off, off the back of a little injury, got straight back into it, playing with all the, the zest and energy of, of as he did when he was when he was nineteen. Um, as as I said, it was just a, it was a horrible blow, but it was, uh, you know. Everton did show a bit of character last night to come back from that, and um, you know, it, it, Seamus won't certainly he, he won't allow sort of any um, narrative around him to develop. Now he, he, he every, every concentration will be on the team. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to Coleman, I get the feeling with such long service with the club, the club are going to stand by him during his uh, recovery here. Um, it gets to a point, obviously, when people wonder about contract extensions and whatever else, but the feeling seems to always be from the club, and I even think back to Ancelotti comparing him to Maldini and saying that he's the type of guy who could play well into his 30s and he could potentially be a really good coach along the lines. Um, if Seamus Coleman decides that the city of Liverpool and Everton is where he wants to be even at the end of his playing days, it seems on the face of it this is a guy who might be well-primed to go into a coaching position. Well, yeah, it's it's funny you mention that because, as I said, that, that interview that, that that I did with him now, it was um, it, it was four years ago, um, and he said about it, um, he was doing it, he, he was actually going to do his badges while um, he was injured the first, after that leg break, but he didn't want anybody to know about it because he didn't want anybody to pick up the wrong end of the stick and think that he was he you know he, he might not come back. Um, he said he said to me that day, I'll never forget that um he he always thought he was just gonna walk away from football. Um he was gonna go back to Gilly Beggs, live with his family, have the quiet life, you know, just have um I think he was interested in, in, in going back to playing Gaelic football and, and, and whatnot. Um he said you and you'll you won't see me again. But then something's changed and he could actually said he could see himself being a manager uh at some point. He's done his badges um you know, and what a what 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 a what a, what a journey that would be because he's definitely got the character, he's definitely got the passion, um, and it would be it would be lovely to see him um, progress in some way. Um, it, 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 you know, if that's the, the, the second phase of his career, but um, Ever- <clears throat> we'll put it this way: Everton better best, better stand by him now. If if he, if this is a long injury and whatever, they, they best stand by him. They best look after him. Well, particularly when he's given, what, 13, 14 years service at this stage and he was yeah. signed for less than yeah. six figures. One of the great Premier League yeah. bargains, really. It's, it, it, yeah, it is one of the, the outstanding Premier League signings. It was it was a throwback. You know, it was like Ronnie Whelan going to um, Liverpool for £10,000 from home farm. It, you know, it was the equivalent of £60,000 in 2009. You know, some people... There's, there's, there's bang average players uh, in the Premier League who are getting £60,000 a week now. <laughs> And that's what the James Coleman's played nearly four hundred games, captain of the club on um, however many times of sixty thousand pounds. You, you you just don't see transfers like that anymore, and it, it says everything for what Seamus has done in terms of you know embracing the challenge, like overcoming the homesickness that he had when he was you know he, he found it difficult to even even leave his hotel at the beginning um, and forge a career as one of you know a right back to, that, that's. Um, respected by everybody who's come across his path yeah it may well be a watching brief for him over the next month but when we look at these fixtures between now and May 28th you've already mentioned the fact that Brighton away Man City at home are two very difficult games I think picking up points would be a bonus there where this is likely to be decided I would think Wolves away and then Bournemouth at home in the last game and in all likelihood no matter what happens over the next two fixtures those last two are probably going to decide what happens here 
Yeah, I, I, I was with a I was with a former Everton player last night, and um, we, we were we were talking about the running, and he he, he was he was quietly uh, not I, I won't say confident. Uh, he was but he was encouraged by um, what he'd seen in terms of that point and how he was looking at the table, and he said it's just a question of holding your nerve. Now he said that it, if whatever happens in the next two games, nobody's going to give Everton a prayer. So work around the basis that there's not going to be any points coming and then attack Wolves and then if you can if you get to the last day against Bournemouth everybody would take that because Goodison would be like would be would be like a furnace um, and you you would if Everton had to if Everton had to beat Bournemouth to stay up on the final day of the season I, w- I would think they would do it mm. You mentioned already how important the fans are going to be over this uh, last four games of the season the fan anger I don't think it dissipated since the turn of the year where we saw the fan protests and they were very annoyed about the way the club was being run. Maybe the focus now goes on the team trying to pick up points over the last four games, but um, that disquiet among the fans is unlikely to go away no matter what happens. Oh, no. No, 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 no. The, the, no, the, 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 the disquiet's not going anywhere. And rightly so. Um, they're fed up. They're fed up with um, the bad decisions that have been made by the board. They're, they're aching for change. Um I think change needs to come. I think I think it needs um, rejuvenation, um, fresh ideas. Um, you know, a bit of different dynamic, a different dynamic around the place. Um, how how they do that, I don't know. Um, but um, I, I hate I hate the fact that Everton fans, in, in some people's eyes, have been sort of vilified as as the. Um, as the thing that's been as, as the thing that's wrong with the club when as I spoke at great length that that just isn't the case um no it, 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 there is an awful lot of things to be sorted out um in in the in the, the coming weeks but for the time being the focus has to be on the team and the the energy will be will be put into that um and once Everton's once all being well Everton's Premier League status is secured then they can they can change the focus. Yeah, because I was wondering, when we go back to January particularly, the focus on this from a story point of view seemed to be angry Everton fans, owners feel that they can't go to the ground and that was the feeling around late January. But I'm interested, the fans, it would seem, want to see definitely a change on the uh, the sporting project, I think is what they call it now at the moment. They want to see substantial change in how the club is run, it would seem. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a, ve- it's a very, very um, complicated issue. Um the way um, um, the, the the guidance that um, club officials got was that it wouldn't be um, wise for them to uh, attend the game against Southampton, um, and since then nobody has been back. But uh, in in terms of the board of directors, um, I. I it, <laughs> That, that that situation though isn't sustainable because um what sort of what sort of message does it send out in terms of leadership and um unity it it, it doesn't really and that's that's why there needs to be changed but um it, it is a very very complicated um very complicated issue um but as, as, I can't say it any clearer. The fans aren't to blame for, for for what's going on. The fans are just absolutely fed up of of, of the way the the club have have seeped um, have, have, have slithered into this position and two relegation fights in two years was not what it was about. Yeah, no, very much the focus on the next four games. Well, Dominic, thanks a million for joining us. It was a pleasure. Thanks very much. Second.